How are we doing? Audio good check. Julie, just check, check. Ready to go. All right, stand by. Just let me pull this flipping thing out of here a bit. Yeah. Stand by. There we go. There we go. Now pull that back there. There we go. Just like I've got spiders web hanging off me yet. Hey folks, how are you doing? Um, a very warm well. Sorry we're late. Um, 11.10, but that will make up for all the times we're early, eh? Um, we are at the um, Haas Museum here in... Um, is it anywhere near Al Wollongong? Yes, south of, south of Wollongong, Albion Park Rail. It's yeah. about 20 kilometres um, south of Wollongong. Don't you love that accent, folks? Just stand here all day <laughs> and talk to him. This is Warren, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Warren, um, thank you to start with for, uh, for helping us um, get around this beautiful aeroplane. I just wanted to say one thing. My old man flew these yeah. uh, with Skyways of London. Um, I'll show you a picture of him later on, okay. but proper yeah. swashbuckler. Bit like that fella over there with the RAF moustache, you know. Okay, um, yeah. But um, did you ever see Basil 40? No, I didn't. From, 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 no? No. No, with a silly walk? No. No? Okay, no. okay, well I'll have to show you anyway. Okay, then right. you'll understand what I'm talking about. Monty Python? No, you know not No, John Cleese? Either. No. no, all right. I don't watch a lot of television. <laughs> Fella's never got a spark parking ticket in his life and I've got one uh, after four <laughs> days uh, this morning. More on that later. Yeah. But anyway, we are at this uh, amazing museum. Um, the um, It's H-A-R-S, tell us what that stands for. Historical Aircraft Restoration Society. And in terms of any uh, restoration uh, museum that I've been to, this has to be the most um, uh, involved one. I think almost, you know, a good percentage of the aircraft that you have here on show are actually still flying. They are, they are, yeah. Like that DC-3 right behind us. Yeah. And uh, that, other... That, that, that aircraft was the aircraft that TAA actually used on its first commercial flight in 1946. Wow. It's that aircraft. Wow. So kind of in its original scheme. Yeah. Wow. Untouched, but we've still got, flying. How about that? Yeah. Um, some of the others, we've got uh, Air Force Dakotas and that as well, but uh, that is a DC-3. Beautiful. Um, and uh, what a way to, uh, to, to uh, I guess you're retired. Are you retired? Oh yes. <laughs> I'm just trying to be a little bit. Um, uh, 30, but, 30, Thirty-two years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, mate, you're doing well, I have to say. And uh, what a better, what a great way to spend your retirement working on aeroplanes. How long have you been working here for? Thirty-two years. Thirty-two years. Fair yeah. play to you. That's absolutely fantastic. But what a great place to come and work on a daily basis, getting your hands dirty, getting your overalls dirty. Well, yeah, I, I only come down during a, of a weekend. Uh, Thursday I came down, Thursday afternoon, work on them Friday and sometime in part of Saturday. Other than that I'm at home the rest of the week. Right, right. Um, uh, we're basically, I'm, I look after this aircraft and sometimes the Neptune which is inside the hangar. Yes. Because they've got the similar engine and I'm licensed on, on them. Right. But, uh, oh yes, I think since I retired it's, it's uh, kept me alive. Fantastic, mate. Now, the um, the details, the, the history on this aircraft, I believe you were involved in it oh, right, right from the get-go, the restoration of her as well. Um, I know she came from the desert somewhere, didn't she? Is, it, is that right? Or? That's right. It was in, in uh, Tucson, Arizona. Um, I, I learned about it uh, not long after I retired off 747s. And, um, what were you doing on 747s, by the way? Sorry. I was a flight engineer. Oh, cool, man. Cool. What for, On the old 1s and 2s? And, and 707s. And oh, mate. Um, That's another story you can talk us through. Well, yeah, you? I'm hoping to bring back the Travolta one within the next 18 months. So. Oh, mate, that would be fantastic. Something we would have to cover. Surely we'd have to be here for yeah. the arrival of that. Be because uh, it was part of my my um, uh, learning process on 707s. And yeah. flight engineer, of course. A lot of people watching now, the uh, the, the, the younger audience won't appreciate no. a flight engineer because now it's just two pilots. They've done away with that. But as we will see in this amazing aeroplane, in terms of the uh, in terms of uh, the interior, uh, the flight deck, yeah. it's just it's just a, a, a complete chalk and cheese compared to what you see today with all the the instruments, all analog, of course, okay. and the five man flight crew, isn't it? Uh, two pilots, flight engineer, wireless operator. No, no. no. 
our, our navigator and wireless operator in a little box up on the front there. But generally we use three pilots and two flight engineers. Right, right. But back More in the day, thing. but back in the day when they originally flew, would it, would it, would it have been a five-man crew? Oh yes, yes. Yeah, at, at radio operators and, and navigators. Yeah. Incredible. So when they did the long range flights, oh, yeah. you'd rely on the navigator. That's yeah. crazy. Literally like we did back in the day before sat nav and all that, we had to break the map out and yeah. where do we turn here and do all of that sort yeah. of stuff. And We get it easy, we just follow the little pink line on the GPS now. It, in, exactly. And, uh, and I guess this one's probably still got a... Um, a okay. <laughs> it's, it's, the sextant is still up there. That is just incredible. That's just incredible. I'm guessing most of the passengers probably weren't made aware of that. Just get on it and hope for the best. No, they didn't. No, no. They, didn't know <laughs> they didn't know that was going on. No, no, no. But an amazing flight deck, and you will see that in a little while, folks. So, um, so how long did it take to restore her? Uh, I think they initially took over it in 1989. Wow. Of which I didn't go over there at all. I retired in 1990, November 1992, and I had 18 trips over there, and I was on the delivery flight on this, coming back in 1996. So, um, and doing part of my flight engineer conversion as well on this aircraft. Most people go from piston aeroplanes to jet aeroplanes, but I'm I'm the other way around. Your I jets go, to uh, to pistons. pistons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, we're talking about proper piston engines here, folks. We're not yeah. talking about none of that turboprop stuff. These no. are proper piston radial engines. Pratt and Whitney's? No, right cyclones. Oh, they're right cyclones. Oh, because yeah. didn't they change to Pratt and Whitney's later on, or was it no. the other way around? I don't know. No, no. But so these are right cyclones. These are right cyclones. Wow. They did make a couple of these uh, models of these with. Um, uh, the turbo props on them. Yes, yeah. But uh, I think that was more Air Force, and I don't. I don't and it's know a little bit too late, made. wasn't it? By then, they mm, sort yeah. of like kind of got towards the, yeah, the you know, because this was this was the, um, this was uh, introduced by Lockheed uh, for um, t to to combat the the DC six, wasn't it? In terms of I think so, competition, yeah. they followed the DC seven uh, as well. But uh, yeah, that was um, but the seven oh seven killed this aircraft. Yeah, yeah, Once. absolutely. Yeah. 707 killed a lot of, uh, of, of, of yeah. well, it started the jet age of aviation, didn't it, yeah. at the end of the day? Sure. And we wouldn't be where we are now if it wasn't for that. So, uh, no, for And the sure. 707 is a beautiful aeroplane, let's face it, especially in the Qantas livery. Oh, yeah. With that beautiful <laughs> chrome uh, underside. Um, but um, in terms of um, the, the length of her, in terms of the stretch, it's a 1049, isn't it? It's it is. 1049. Yeah. So she was stretched by about 23 feet, wasn't it? Something like that on the 749, yeah. This one actually is a C-121C. I see. And the Navy, Navy um, uh, version of the 1049. I see. But we still call it the 1049. Yeah, and she's got the uh, the long-range tanks on her on the on the wingtip. Yeah, but they're only, on this aircraft, they're only there for show. Yeah, they, yeah. They weren't on it when we took it over. It's only yeah. there to make it look pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand by, GP, stand by. Can you just stand by one second? I've just got to turn the mic up. I think I've got to turn the mic up. Hold on a minute. Uh, let me just have a look here. Okay, okay. Yeah, mic's at full uh, at full pelt, GP. The mic's at full pelt. So, um, well, let me just... Uh... No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. No, let me just... Uh, let me just... Um... Well, he's right next to me for crying out loud. He's right next to me. Is that better? Okay, anyway, um, we'll just carry on talking, mate. For, okay. for, apparently, you're quite quite quiet, but that's all right. It doesn't matter. You don't have to shout or anything like I'm that. I'm not a I? rowdy person. No. <laughs> um, mate, but it must have been... Um, so, so in terms of, like, the length of time that it took to, to restore it back oh, yeah. to back to full airworthy condition because that's a that's amazing thing i mean i mean the um uh, uh, sitting in a desert is a good thing for, for for aircraft in terms of the dry climate but it still doesn't matter you would have had to have uh, fully restore those engines in terms of stripping yeah. them down yeah. yeah actually actually if there's a photograph inside which you will see later and um doesn't look like anything like this i think yeah. i'd have walked away from it but um, yeah that's how it all started yeah but that's um, that's that's having faith in the aircraft, isn't it? You it know, is, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Was our president having faith in it? I think, and he said, "Yeah, we can do this." And people sort of went, 
Yeah, and it, 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 here it is now. Yeah, she's a beautiful example, and I think uh, I'm right in saying that this is the only flying example of the 1049 in it the is. world? It is, yes. Yeah. So today, what you're going to do is you're going to run up the number four engine for that's us, is that correct. right? That's correct, yeah. Okay, and so what, what, what have you had to do in terms of preparation for that? Well, this morning, um, seeing as I have a, a 72 hours, I had to pre-oil it, put uh, oil into the bearings. Now, normally, we heat the heat oil up and put it in under pressure. But to, for one engine, I've done it on its own oil system, and I finished up getting 20, 20 psi on it. So nice. Um, so is that? Do you actually rotate the rotate everything and just to, so that well, everything's um, uh, lubricated oil, nicely? Yeah, looking at the oil pressure gauge, and we've got to. 20 psi on it. So. Fantastic. So before we fire her up, which we're going to film from here, we're uh, we're also going to we're going to film you on the flight deck, obviously making all those preparations and all that, okay. and we're going to see an example of that that oil pressure. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. One of the many dials there, <laughs> and this is where we're going to see, folks, uh, what's commonly known as the BFP, the blind flying panel, okay. and the six pack. Don't they? Yeah. Some of them some of them call it the six pack, which is your six major instruments that. If, well, you call it a blind fly, flying panel because it, you can fly the aircraft by those six instruments okay. if, you, if your visibility is, is very low or at da in darkness or whatever. Well, I think some of these later ones have had to do that too when they, they, their butte screens go blank. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean... Yeah, Jim, Jim here, if you want to interview him. How you doing, Jim? I'm good. He started his apprenticeship. We both started our apprenticeship. The same day in Qantas in 1956. Wow, how fantastic. Now, where the, where the two of them are still signing in this one out. Wow, that's brilliant. So you must get a lot of, uh, you must be quite, come on in, Jim. How you doing, mate? I'm Jerry. Good. Nice to meet you. Good on you. Um, so uh, you, must, uh, you must be quite proud of, uh, proud of her, really. Very, very, very proud of her. Oh, yeah. The fact yeah. you have kept her going all this time. When we first brought to Australia, we thought, if we can keep this thing going for 10 years, we'll have done well. Now it's about 25 or 26 or something. That is fantastic. I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of historical museums, historic museums that that, that, that have these type of aircraft, you generally use them for either a, a, just a static engine start or, or taxi. But you guys fly it. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So who flies it? Well, our president, Bob Delahunty, uh, he's the chief pilot. Uh, we have another FO who is on sick leave at the moment, Reg Darwell. He used to be with Qantas. And we have another couple of others who are being taught to fly it again. Then we have the flight engineers, myself, and uh, my colleague Greg, Greg Deards. So uh, we all keep going on it. So you, you, you actually, uh, the, the, the flight engineers station is still operational? Oh yeah, we, wow. we make the aeroplane go, the pilots only point it. Yeah, yeah, that is fantastic. That's so you right. must monitor that, that station. That that must be like literally, you know, your eyes are, are not taken off of that off of that Lex panel. Warren. He's right. the man that runs it. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. So, yeah. I mean, just to, just the just the the idea of flying something with first of all such a massive, great big yoke on it. Uh, it's all cables as well. There's no oh, yeah. fly by wires. There's nothing like that. Um, well, it is actually quite surprising the, the, the way that those systems work. It's not like one cable from the front all the way to the back. It, it goes through different sort of like systems, it doesn't it? And pulley through, wheels and all that. Well, pulleys and direction changes everywhere and there's backup systems and so forth. So that's something that needs to be permanently maintained as yeah, well. That the whole airplane needs to be permanently maintained. It's just, yeah. it's not, not that hard because we don't do much flying, but we've still got to be on it all the time for corrosion and... Uh, uh, leakage and so forth. And it's a, a, a complicated airplane for its day. Yeah. I think Warren would agree with that. And uh, like it's got five separate hydraulic systems for a start. Wow. And uh, yeah, so it, it's you you want to know your, your way around it. And all the brakes, any any air systems on there, like old aircraft? No. Um, no. All all hydraulic. All hydraulic. All hydraulic. Wow, yeah. that is absolutely fantastic. And what is a brilliant thing, folks, and we'll show you up close because we're going to go have a little walk around her if that's all right. Okay. But is that front gear, the, the, the length of it, um, it was, I believe it was strengthened on different variants of the aircraft just to, 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 to allow for that e extension on it. Was the extension on the front or the back or was it in the midsection sort of like, because it is the a big long... The plane grew yeah. from, from a very small one that Howard Hughes was involved yeah. with to one bigger than this, the 1649. And, uh, it, but the um, amazing part is that the original aeroplane was the one they used 
after they brought it back from Howard Hughes to actually do the extensions and they tested them all. So that one little aeroplane went from a, uh, an 069 right through to a 1649. By bigger wings, bigger fuselage, the whole bit. It's amazing what they did, Lockheed, on that. Yeah, I, I read up on it. That there was a, a, quite a lot of variants that they there did. Was. They did uh, some pure cargo variants yeah. as oh, well yeah, yeah, with yeah. the um, with the flooring all um, this can be uh, made reinforced pure, pure yeah. cargo really yeah, this one can be yeah wow so, so great um, a great aircraft and what I have to say apologies to somebody we were talking about um, when we we're coming out here about the Connie uh, even though my old man flew them I didn't realize that uh, I thought it was just the outboard the outboard um, uh, uh, verticals that were, were that were rudders but there's yeah. actually three on there yep Yep, the aeroplanes that had the big dome on the top, they locked out that centre rudder. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Mm. Right, is that just because of the airflow? It just Must didn't work? Been, yeah, we yeah. Have so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, gents, thank you so much. Uh, but we're definitely far from being finished. Okay. Uh, an exciting part. Is she, she, I guess she's going to smoke when she fires up, isn't she? <laughs> there's there's oh, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, I can guarantee that. Yeah. <laughs> another, another, another little thing is the, I, I had a photograph in which Alan Cutts gave me when they put the rudders in. The, the three rudders assume a different angle. Do they? And they're back the other way. Mm. Wow, that, and yeah. that's just to counteract, that's that's just oh. a... Wow. The reason I don't know. linkages. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It yeah. does it, so. Wow, that's... Because tuning that must be really difficult, getting them so that they're absolutely... Uh, well, the design of it. Yeah. So they work that way. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I'm, I, yeah, I'm guessing someone's on the comments. I'm not looking at the comments at the moment, but I'm sure somebody's explaining the reason around that. Um, maybe twist or something like that. Just the the, the, the characteristics of the aircraft, and Don't know. so on and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, <coughs> gents, um, let's. Uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unhook this. I'm going to put that on my back, and we're just going to follow you around and um, uh, um, fly on the wall kind of stuff, yeah. get up on the flight deck, have a look inside the aircraft, walk through the cabin, uh, see what uh, luxury there was back in those days. Mm -hmm. There were lot, obviously a lot of different sort of like, there was uh, high capacity aircraft, wasn't there, with, with like 73 seats or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. there was the ones with Many only- Variations. Yeah, and you've got sort of like a first class cabin in there as well. A, uh, a Suedo first class. Absolutely. It's a lot fantastic. different, and I'll explain that to you when we get up there. Yeah, right, let's do that then. Okay, GP, all good? Okay, okay. Uh, well, I tell you what, I'm quite impressed with this. Oh, yeah, the camera's there. Right. As far as the airframe goes, Jim could probably go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Righty yo. Happy you're not on camera now because I'm. No, we're all live, mate. We're all live. Everything's good. You can cut it out anyway, can't you? Uh, no, because it's live. It's too late, mate. The coffin's done. <laughs> so this is the yeah, number four that we're going to fire up. Yep. This is the one. Yep. Um, right cyclone, yes? That's correct. Yep. So what sort of like, um, I guess it's shaft power that we're talking about on, a, on, an, air, on, a, on an engine like this, is it? Oh, it's a right cyclone. It's a, a 3350. This is the size of the cylinders. Um, each cylinder is <coughs> three, three point three cubic. Wow, that's Hang pretty there. impressive. They're big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I understand that the um, uh, some of the variants had to have this uh, this plating fitted uh, aft of the exhaust because of the uh, the heat that was uh, was put through the, uh, the pipes and the flames that literally came out of them. Well, yeah, there's a special um, um, panel on the side. To the counter. <laughs> yeah. There's, uh, yeah. The, the heat shields and they're there to fix. There's a lot of a lot of temperature coming out, and then you'll see sometimes on a uh, a full power engine run. Yeah. Where uh, you've got flames coming out of all four engines. Yes. In, in three locations. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. You can see it from from up the top as well, can't you? When you when you. Yeah, you can see it in, inside the cabin. The cabin. Yeah. 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 So in terms of like, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that the, um, in terms of the, uh, the maintenance and the, um, that the props have to be uh, constantly well, uh, had, balanced, yeah. is it? Or? No, no, they've got to be overhauled. Yeah. And uh, just up where the prop goes into the, uh, the hub, yep. there's a, a rubber shield there. And uh, they've got to go to the overhaul shop and it's taken off and inspected for corrosion. I see, every, yes, uh, yes. Every 12 years. And we've just got uh, three of them back. 
Wow. Well, yeah, and they, they cost us oh, heaps. <laughs> yeah, and I guess that's the same with the cylinders as well. They have to be... Uh, uh, they're pretty good. Is it? Yeah, yeah well, they do... Warren does compression checks on them every year. Yep, yep. And uh, as long as the compressions are good and uh, we can change one cylinder at a time if necessary. Yeah. Right, right. And what about the undercarriage in terms of their, the, the maintenance of the undercarriage? Is it... Uh, it's pretty good. Pretty it's straightforward? Ro robust. Uh, they are on a, on a time basis, uh, but because of our operation, we'll never ever <laughs> yeah. get to the point where we have to change them. Yes, yes. Uh, tires and brakes are just a wear item. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I understand you only run this for a sort of like, was it 15 hours a year or something like that? Uh, what did we do last year? Only about three None. points something, didn't we? Because we had the three propellers that had to go to... Oh. Yeah, but the, the year before was oh. the last... Yeah, yeah, we don't do much. About 3.9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And of course, a, lot, a few people will be wondering what what's the the deal with the uh, the Royal Mail um, uh, emblem that, up there, that which goes is right back. yes, and it does go right back, and it's still yeah. to current day as well, which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was basically um, uh, part of the route, the kangaroo route, wasn't it? Just it in was, terms of getting the mail the and the airlines uh, survived in the early days by getting a subsidy to carry mail. Yes, yes, much yeah. like they do today with freight. Probably yeah. quite a lot of the, uh, the 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 cost of the flight is 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 is, is, freight, is yeah. yeah yeah is freight. Yeah. Okay, so we'll walk around there. Let's just uh, let's just have a, a quick look. So you got a, um, a ground generator on on board here, just to uh, obviously no APU. She starts up using a ground power unit. We do, yeah. And what do you uh, in terms of fuel that you're using on her is. Um, it's just your standard um, standard jet A1, is it? Or uh, no, no, it's, it's just fuel, A1 is it? It's just petrol. normal petrol. It's petrol. Straight down the gas station and uh, off we go. Exactly. Fantastic. We bring the gas station to us. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> never, never put jet A1 in this. No, no. You blow the thing up, wouldn't you? I should have known that, really. I'm an idiot. Yeah, but sure. there we go. <laughs> wow, that's a big old... It's interesting, the rake on it, isn't it? Yeah. With the rake of, the, uh, rake the, of that the, gear. The idea is... Right? Not sure why they wanted to rake it, but the wheels, if you look at the wheels, they're... Yeah, 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 they are. And that's they're cambered, very heavily cambered is, as well. Is that for taxiing or...? No, well, it is for taxiing, yes, and running, because uh, that gets rid of the shimmy. Stops wheel shimmy. Yes, right, and I've got you. Like that. So that actually reduces the wear on the, on the, on the hubs no, unit, no? No, 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 it just stops the wheel from doing this. I see, like right. Like a supermarket trolley. Yes, yes, that's yes, shimmy. I've got you, yeah. And you wouldn't want that happening on air, would you? No. The, ori the original aeroplanes never had nose wheel steering either. Yeah, that's right. Which we have. Yeah. And that, they used to turn the aeroplane using uh, the brakes. on propellers and brakes and brakes and that. And then they, they put the, uh, put, actually put the nose wheel ste steering cylinders on it. Uh, but they kept the same, the same design. Yes. Even the later aeroplane has yeah. that design on it. Yeah, yeah, just the more modified internals, really. I mean, it's yeah. much the same as it always was, actuators and yeah, pumps and that stuff, kind yeah. of stuff. Um, yeah. And uh, so this is an early variant of, uh, of um, a version of, of nose wheel steering, I'm guessing. No, 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 no. The, no? Uh, the nose wheel steering first came in, I can't give it a year, but the model over the aeroplane was a 649, and they had one run off the runway. And they thought, hmm, we better do something about this. Okay, interesting. So that's what happened. They, uh, they developed the nose steering for it. And uh, from all the way through 6, 7, and 10, 4, 9, 16, 49, they all carry it. So before the nose steering, they would have used the engines to steer and it? Brakes. And, and brakes. brakes. And brakes. And yeah. brakes, yes, of course, yeah. Fantastic. Right, fellas, let's, uh, should we get on board? I'll tell you what I do really like is your, uh, is your, is your, uh, the steps. Uh -huh. yeah. That's a lovely old thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That it is. is. Um, how did you get hold of that? I mean, it's. Um, how did we get them? They were a long time ago, and we've restored them, as you can see. Beautiful. But Quarters had uh, lots and lots and lots of those years back. Yes, I see. Yeah. And they were made by the local Ford dealership here, uh, Hastings Deerings. No. Mm, they have a little Ford Anglia engine in them. That is fantastic. Yeah, kings and queens have used those. Those, that yeah. type of stairs for yeah. really getting on and off aeroplanes, yeah. Wow, and we believe the Beatles used them as well. Wow, yeah, I bet there's some footage somewhere, isn't there? <laughs> sure to be right. So, um, what's the uh, what's the procedure in terms of uh, in terms of starting her up then, Phil? Oh, it's not Phil, is it? It's um, Warren. Warren, well, sorry, 
probably better to show you when I'm up there rather yep. than down here. But no. Yep, yep. Basically, it's a case of turning it over with fuel on and uh, introducing the ignition and... Uh, and that's it. Should go. Yeah, yeah. So she's, like you say, she's all primed. It's, it, 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 there's, there's no sort of like... Cause on the old... Um, on the old Merlins and that, they had to prime them underneath, didn't they? To yeah, the, get the, yeah some of these engines, engines are fuel injected. Right. We, we never use prime. Right, right. On these ones. They okay. do on the, on the, the DC-3, but not on this one. We've got fuel injection. Okay, fuel okay. Injection. So, uh, yeah, would have made it. Um, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a trade-off, isn't it? Because fuel injection... It's quite a, quite a complex system, isn't it, to, to maintain, I'm guessing, rather yeah. than a, a, a just straightforward priming system, oh, which no, is carbureted, it isn't it? It's more to it than that. Yeah, it's not yeah. just the priming that they do that for. Yeah. It's much more efficient, get better fuel economy, correct? Yeah. yeah. Right. He's the engine man. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, so it's, it's not electronic uh, fuel injection. It's no. It's straight mechanical. It's two pumps on the back of each engine. One, do, one does the, the, the front row and one does the back row. Wow! Um, yeah, of course, no electronic systems back then. No, no, no. no. Very few electronics, really. Right, okay, let's uh, jump on board. And there, folks, just to show you, is the. Uh, I don't know if we can uh, get a good shot across there, but you can quite clearly see the tri rudder system and stabilizers. So I'm sure there's a. Uh, you know, in terms of. I'm guessing that they had to have the uh, the side, the the the, the, the stabilizers either side because of how small the, uh, the 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 mid mid stabilizer was. I'm yeah, guessing. they had they had the three fins. Yeah. Because they wanted the airplane to fit into the existing hangers. Is it? Instead okay, so they didn't want to. Yes. Three little ones. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's right. Makes sense, doesn't it? it does. Yeah. Rather than cutting a sodding great big hole out of the hangar. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when I was back. Oh. When we say we're, there she is. That was it, how we got it. Wow. And in that condition. Yeah. And to say I might have uh, walked away from it. Yeah, that's. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that's, that's wow. How it all started and. That's and there she is now. How, how we first started and there it is now. Yeah, that's crazy. The uh, those boneyards with all the aircraft in them. Mm. So is is she was uh, U.S. Air Force previously was she or is yeah, that her, yeah, it was her. that's not her that's not her no but, but it was you but she was it, right it was in it's not her but uh, yeah. it's a similar similar yeah was like that then it went to to this um, um color scheme paint scheme and it was in the air national guard in the finish who yeah they were the last ones to use it so wow. this aircraft actually flew in the vietnam war wow using it as a a passenger freight and a medivac, right? Which we, when we got it, had straps down through the hat racks, and they could make a bunk for, for people from up there who who couldn't sit, yeah. couldn't stand, yes. had to lie down all the way back. Yes. And it was also the airplane was set up to run a um, iron lung. You okay. You've never heard of an iron lung at your yeah. age? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm sixty. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay, you're doing good, mate. Thanks, mate. He's <laughs> a young bloke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was set up to, to run on Iron Lung. And it has a, uh, with the big door here, opens. Yep, yep. Right, there's the outline of the door. Oh, okay, so yeah, so uh, uh, again, if it, if, if it wants to use a, yeah, as a freighter, yeah. yeah. Well, they have what you could bolt on underneath the fuselage, a litter lift. And uh, it was electrically run. So the power point over there. And uh, it would lift the the, uh, the patient yep. up and into here, and then they had all the, as Warren was saying, all the bunks, all stretches. Wow. We can actually time. put one of our engines in here, bring it in through that door. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I thought he was going to say one of your um, volunteers then. You can lift them up. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. We have a couple that you can do that with. <laughs> I've just noticed actually the. Um, is that some kind of an early warning radar system there? Because that was uh, that was something that I read up on that they um, yeah. that they were also used it for. Oh yeah, they did. Crazy. So the um, facilities at the back are pretty. Um, okay. That one is as the U.S. Air Force had it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And that there is a photo of the one of the original Qantas Connie 
Wow, yeah, that's how it was. Yeah. Oh, that's and brilliant, they were isn't it? Named um, uh, Homs and Dams for men and women those days. Right, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. Universal yeah. like they are yeah. now. And that uh, that hatch at the back there is that for the bulkhead? Is that just yeah, access into the tail the, for the uh, pressure bulkhead there, and we can go through there to get to the uh, all the uh, controls of the rudder and elevators in the in the back of the airplane. That's quite a squeeze, isn't it? Oh yeah, <laughs> I can fit through there. Yeah, good old boy. <laughs> <laughs> one, okay. At one stage, we could get we could all get into the fuel tanks from underneath. Not these days. No. Yeah. <laughs> too old for that crap anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> The so way the way the airplane's set up at the moment, yes, the original Qantas Connies or the, the passenger Connies, the door, the entry door wasn't here. It was up further, just behind the wing. I see. Yeah. And you walked in there, and you walked into a galley which was covered by uh, uh, curtains. You turned right to come down to first class, which was down oh, here. Oh right, yeah, yeah. Away from the noise and yes. the vibration. Yeah. You turned left to go to tourist class. Okay. But this being a freighter, the door is back here, and yes. we need to carry uh, goods, uh, air stairs and things if we go away. So we've set, set it up so that it's resembling, but first class is up the front. So it's when you uh, when here. you when, when you got her, she had no seats. Did she have any seats in her? The seats were the original um, yeah. Air Force yeah, they, ones. They were, they were terrible. So you had to get hold of these. They're seven six seven business class. Really? Mm, yeah. That's amazing. And the ones further up are out of an A330. No. Yeah. Well, you've done good. Looks yeah. good enough. Yeah. You could have fooled me. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, so upwards to the flight deck. Yep. The uh, the business end. Yep. Well, I'll just a nice um, uh, shot of a, um, a gear up fly past. Emergency exit. Right. No escape slides. slides. You've got a rope instead. Yeah, yeah, and hope for the best. Well, if you've got a fire licking around your rear end, you'll. Yeah. You'll You're not going to think about it, are you? No, you're just going to go. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Wow. This is the mock up of it, and these uh, maps were standard in virtually every Connie built. Oh, really? But. The uh, owner of the air, of the airplane, their country would be in the middle, whereas we I see. Up and that and we're over the side. Right, yeah, <laughs> brilliant. And it just does uh, give you an idea of um, why they call it the kangaroo route, wasn't it? In oh, terms yeah. of yeah. hopping, hoppity, hoppity all yeah. The yeah, yeah, so many, so many. Hold on a minute, we've got a problem. What we've got a problem? With? Okay. Okay, we're all good. We're all good. Yeah, so uh, lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of uh, of of of, uh, of refueling um, oh, yeah, hops. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we got some information over here. Wow, is this the crew station's uh, bunk beds? Is it? Yeah, that's the crew rest area. Oh, and just the, the smell toilet. of it is brilliant, isn't it? There they are. Yep. Sextant down there. Sextant yeah, there you go. Go through there because it's pressurised. Wow. So, periscopic sextant, they call it. So would that be the um? Would that? Oh yeah, and look at this. Look at this as well with all yeah. the different. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. So you know the navigator would hope that when he puts that up there that it can it, it confirms what he's already um what mapping out. What yeah. he guesses. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. He had to have a very sharp pencil too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got a pencil sharpener. No way, that is is that is that original? Yeah, that is that's absolutely original. brilliant. Wow, look but at in this. Basic, basics, they, they choose half your pencil away as well. Yeah, so this is, is this, this flight engineers? No, uh, navigator. Uh, navigator, yeah, I should have known that by the, by the old uh, navigational systems yep, there. Yep, yep. That's insane, man. I mean, that's, that's the sort of thing you'd find in a, in a Lank or a, you know, not far off of it, really, well, in terms of the... The area is not much different. No, no, they're still using that kind of equipment. Mm. I mean, Lancastrians were uh, the first, um, of, of, Passenger flight out of Heathrow was a oh. was a converted Lancaster bomber, yeah, yeah. insane, and so using much the same um, systems, yep. and of course all analog, no digital, none whatsoever, yeah. not a single piece, and you've got but you have got one tiny little piece of uh, of um, digital equipment on here, haven't you? Which is I guess your navigational well, GPS, is it? Navigation. Okay, GPS, yeah. GPS, yeah. Yes, yes. Had to update all that stuff for yeah. safety reasons. Yeah. 
so a bit of a tight squeeze in through here but this is just insane just the uh, that's Warren's desk so that's the flight engineer yeah he can explain all that to you wow, look at all the, uh, that is just incredible this instruments and gauges and uh, what's interesting is also that you've got control over the uh, over the engines here as well with throttles yeah. and fuel tank well, those selectors propellers are going around we're doing it mm. insane they do have another set of throttles and that up there if that we do all the all the throttling and the starting with our our, um, uh, our equipment back here and each of the these are your main gauges yes each of those gauges has got two needles in it right like that'll be one and two that'll be three and four i so see when, you, when you're operating you, you've got one gauge is, is you're looking at two engines i see interesting Oh, and it's it's got them written on there as well, two and four, and oh, yeah. and the and the other ones are behind it. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I was training, and that the flight engineer behind me said, "On the approach, all I want to see is two and four. I thought, "What's he talking about?" <laughs> right, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Two and four, the other needles behind it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. Two and four. So it's one inboard and one outboard, is it? No. Well, it's just the fact that they're the ones that are showing. Oh, oh just there, the ones right? that are showing, the right? I've got gotcha. you. The same. Yeah, side yeah. Of the yeah, yeah. Yep. It's incredibly f fuse board there, of course, yep. amongst other stuff. It yes. There's actually no spare spot around here, is there, really? That, no, that's... and they, behind you, they used to have a uh, radio operator. Right, yeah, In yeah, here. yeah. He'd radio. sit here. Uh, wow, that's incredible. Yeah, very crowded cockpit and very noisy. I would have thought as well. No, no, not no? Too bad, no. Oh, it's quite actually. It's quite well insulated there, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. You know, you're getting off down the runway, but once you get up in the air and then pull the engines back. It's beautiful. And, like, it's, yeah. It's, it's quite good. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Must be a lovely all these sound as well. I mean, you got oil systems. You got oil pressure, oil inlet temperature, oil outlet temperature. Yeah. Which you can control with your. Um, uh, all oil scoops, you've got them all down here, cylinder temperatures, uh, controlled here by, by, the, by those switches, you know, we've got a lot of control over there. Absolutely fantastic. And so you're just literally monitoring that and looking for any drop in anything, really. You're not really, well, other than overheating or anything sort of like cylinder pressure and that sort of thing, you just want to maintain, make, make sure it's maintaining a good, um, well, we, we maintain our cruise performance uh, set up there, setting it up on a, on a BMEP, and generally we use around about the 150 BMEP, and um, that gets it along quite well. But just under, I think I've got the right gauge, 200, 200 knots, and, and it sits there quite happily. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. So, come on then, Warren, what are we doing? We're going to fire her up? Well, we can, yeah. We'll have to have that going down there. Okay. Do you want to start it now? Yeah, we can. Uh, we're, I think I think we're uh, we're all ready. I love the authentic um, yokes as well. It's fantastic, okay, isn't will it? Go up there. He'll, he'll look after the brakes just in case it moves, which it probably won't on a on one engine. But uh, we won't take it for granted. And of course, everything, all the trim, all the trim wheels that you have got there, that that is something that's completely manual. There's oh, yeah. no autopilot, no yeah, nothing no, like that. Got autopilot. Oh, you got autopilot, yeah, have you? There's an autopilot on the airplanes, yes. Oh, there was back in those days as yeah, well. There was oh, was there? Days, wow, yeah. very, yeah. very early form oh, of it. I'm guessing. Oh, it sophisticated back, like they are. Now. They, no, yeah. no one's sophisticated, but they get autopilot goes back a long way before that. Right, right. Uh, Catalina down there, which is 1935, it had autopilot. Wow. Uh, anyway, you going to get some ground powers? Yeah, okay. So what I'll uh, oh okay so I can I can literally the best thing I can do can I see the number can I see it you, you will be able to out there yeah. okay so um, you probably have to go around me but uh, yeah me yeah because I've tried I'd like to try are you going to sit there are you Warren I am okay so let me just have a look inside can I just double check I've got my my shot here because uh, yeah, let me just have a look here. Oh, whoa, 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 battery, battery, battery. Why is that doing that? Stand by. Okay, if I call for that. Probably if you put your camera across there. 
you'll see or, or out the door. Okay, I've got it there. You right, there, okay. Right so there. yeah, 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 yeah. So as soon as you uh, <laughs> as soon as you're about to um, start her up, um, are you going for any sort of checklist at all? Yep, we'll do a checklist. Okay. Yeah, we basically go, go through it. Do, do all our pre-flight. I'll leave those out because of, uh, this, this occasion because we're not going to go flying, but they would be put in. We go around, we do our. Since I said we've got ground power now. Okay. Now it's now it's applied to the aeroplane, and we'll, we'll go around and um, set up our panels. Uh, one I will do is that's running the uh, the governor in the propeller from uh, full increase to full decrease. That should do it within about uh, 11 or 12 seconds. Now you wouldn't start it like that. Unfortunately, that, no. it's a limit light at both ends. But you're going to tell me when, the, when when you're going to fire her up, yeah? I will. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, you'll, you'll know. Okay. You ready for a uh, checklist, Wells? Yeah, just want to set up. Okay. Okay. I'll only call the ones we need. Ignition switches are off, 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 off. <coughs> Seat belt smoking signs, we don't worry about landing your lever is down. Brake selector is emergency. The EOS elevator boost is on. Elevator boost is on. Hand pump selection smoking frequency is. The radio is. Thank you.
Beautiful. I can I can hear a big round of applause all around the world, mate. That was fantastic, gents. Thank you so much. People loving that. I'm hearing. Uh, normally, I'm watching the chat and watching what people are saying, but I'm hearing from my director, Jilly, that uh, everyone's loving it. So, uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. So, when you're when when are you next planning on flying her then? Maybe next weekend. Is it? We're not too sure yet. Uh, this okay. Draining in it. Um, that is not certain yet. But, uh, Right, well, I'm, uh, yeah, we might stay another week. <laughs> right, gentlemen, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. You're coming down to a good time of the year in Sydney. Yeah, in April, yeah, right? yeah. It's been lovely, mate. It's been, I, m I must admit, the temperature today has been a lot nicer. Oh, yeah. it's, uh, We've had some hot days. Yeah. They're, they're coming down into autumn temperature. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you're a couple of very popular guys amongst the audience globally, mate. You might have to do a world tour or something like that, I don't know. That but. can be arranged. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, quick tour around the 747. Anybody that can do that for us? Yeah, we have people. There'll be other people over there that'll do that for you. Gentlemen, thank you so you, much. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank I, you, I sir. I don't know anything about that model 747. Only the earlier ones. Yeah, yeah, of course, because uh, you weren't, you were redundant on those ones, weren't you? Oh yeah, yeah. But the three, the three hundred, did the three hundred have the flight engineers still? Because yeah, they had the HF aerials as well. Yeah. It was only the long top that they. From the four hundred, which is that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah the three hundred had the flight engineer on it. Yes, P and the uh, all the other the two hundred series and the, um, the partial freighter one. And and then glass came along. Yeah. I think I was you lost all this atmosphere. Yeah, you did. You definitely did. My old man, when he uh, when he because he flew the DC eights as well, the fifty fours. Uh, I flew with him a, a couple of times on the jump seat. He had flight engineers, of course. You know, he had a flight engineer, and yeah, uh, yeah it was uh, it was a sad day for him when he when he retired. Yeah. And when you walk into the cockpit of the of the uh, seven four and look at it, it's bare. Very yeah, when yeah, here, yeah. It's a real airplane. Yeah, you're seeing, you're just seeing the instruments because back there, in the, in the, in the, with the with the with the, with the glass cockpit, you're just seeing screens, aren't you? And they're yeah. blank. There's yeah. nothing on. Yeah. You have to fire them up to actually get some kind yeah. of like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, the Airbus and the Dreamliners. It's when you walk great. on the flight, there's amazing. It's a, uh, yeah. it's it's like chalk and cheese, isn't it? But this yeah. is that airplane still got the basic instruments to get it back on the ground. Yeah, exactly. Everything goes blank. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's a, yeah, that's another sort of like um, another debate, isn't it? You know, in terms of uh, modern pilots versus older pilots, uh, yeah. knowing how to, you know, fly it with a blindfold on, so to speak. Yeah. You know, almost. Yeah. Well, it happened on Qantas ones too. They they had blank screens at times, but yeah, I mean, basically they were in daylight, so they could see which where yeah. the sky was and where the ground was. So yeah, exactly. Was you don't need that at night, do you? No, you don't. Yeah. Right, gents. Right. Thank you so much. Okay. We'll love you and leave you. Yep. All the very best. Well, what we're going to do is I'll send Phil a link uh, so that you can either all watch it together Beautiful. Um, on one day that you on your day off or something. Come in and you can all sit around and watch it on the TV. Beautiful. Okay. That'll be great. Thanks, yeah. fellas. Yeah. Take care. All the best. Okay, GP. Is that good? Everybody like it? What a couple of lovely fellas, eh? Fancy me saying about Avgas, what an idiot. I'll just get me coat. Let's just have a lie down. Flipping it. Come on, son. Get with the program. Avgas. <laughs> okay, Phil. That was fantastic, mate. Thank you so much. Uh, Phil, to, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to the jungle? If we can. Are we able to? Well, let's wander down and have a look. Okay. Cool. For instance, there's the Canadian, they have them in Caribous. Yes. There's only three in the world that fly and two of them are here. So it's rather remarkable. It's almost got an islander look about it, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And that lovely old DC-3 with the original, as it was, yes. hasn't really changed it. I mean, it... That was the colours and the, what it looked like in 1946 when it did the first flight for our government airline that formed in 1946 called Trans Australian Airlines. So it's in those colours and that's how it looked in 46 and it's still flying. 
So a bit like our old BOAC where it merged and became Qantas, was it? Or? Yeah, TAA became the domestic airline, Qantas the international, but then Qantas gobbled it up like them. Um, yeah, like they like do. Like they do. Yeah. Like they do. All right then. And you say this... Uh, it's this Neptune over here. That, Beautiful, uh, mate. Beautiful. Long-range maritime patrol Neptune. 273, it flies. And we have a French one out the back that flies also. And the P3 Orion, of course. And you've flown in that one, haven't you, Phil? In 273, I have, yeah. Wow. This Orion's doing its annual check, it flies. We're the only civilian museum in the world that's allowed to fly one of these. And uh, that's a massive effort, of course. So anybody who wants to visit here and wants to see these aircraft fly, is there any particular time of the year or day of the year when you have some kind of a flying display? or? Well, sometimes we have... Each month we have what we call a tarmac weekend where on okay. the, the second Friday of every month for three days, the Friday, Saturday and Sunday, we have a, we do it a bit differently than just guided tours. And on those days we fly, we try and get some engine runs or flying for those days. But right. it depends on the maintenance schedule and things like that. Yeah, it must be a really popular day. I guess that's the most popular and time of the a, month. A French Mirage jet over there. Yes, yeah, amazing, Good man. Really? We had those before the F-18. After the Sabre, we've got a Sabre out the back. And the Convair 440 in the background. It's incredible. Look at those windows, man. Look at those windows. So let's see what we can do with the 740. Righto. They've had some special tours on. I don't know whether they're finished yet, but we'll wander up and we'll just... Yeah, see. yeah, yeah. We don't want to um, barge in on... them. Um, we got this aeroplane? Um, why you got it, yeah. or, or the, the history behind it, or no, why we got it? Why didn't they scrap it? Scrap or, it, yeah. Sell it? Uh, was it because she did the? Was it? Was it the record that she broke? That's or? right. That's an official record. In '89, it was the first Qantas 747 400 because it had a longer range than the 300. They delivered it around the world via London to demonstrate that range. And in August 1989, this plane flew London Sydney non-stop. 18,012 kilometres in 20 hours and 9 minutes and that was an official record for, from Switzerland, the uh, Aer Aeronautical Society, Aeronautique, and so when they retired at 26 years later it still had that record, still no one had flown London Sydney non-stop. That is fantastic. So we had it here four years before Qantas did it in another 787, in the 787, sorry. Yeah. And uh, again, with no pair paying passengers. Yes. So for 30 years, it had that record. Wow. And that's why it's here. Wow. So you're proud of her then? Oh, it's a lovely aeroplane. It's undergoing some painting right now. So yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, we'll, we'll brush by that. L nice to see, because I understand they took the... Um, they, what did they take? They took the three of the engines, did they? Well, some of the engines that still had a lot of time on them. Yeah. They said, we can use these. So they took the engines back. And when they got engines they couldn't fix, they sent them down. Okay. So you've got, so they, these are actually, they've got the core and everything in them. They're, they're, they're actually, wow. So they're not, wow, that's fantastic. So that engine there, number two, was yep. actually, I think they said had 100 hours left. So they left it and they took the others and replaced yeah, them yeah. with that broken ones. So. Wow. Is that APU? Is that an APU you got under there? No. no that is an APU. Sorry, yes. Wow. So it's, um, that's the little jet engine under the tail. For, uh, yes. That, that they can yeah. Oh, and that. this is interesting. Can I just uh, show people this? This is, this is what we've here. talked about. Um, a couple of people have talked about on the on the show um, about 747s, the uh, earlier 747s. This is the uh, this is the the rack that they used to carry spare engines, isn't it's it? Called a fifth pod. Yeah. In fact, our number four engine, which we can't see right there, it broke down in South Africa, and to they couldn't fix it there, so they were sending it back to Australia to see if they could fix it. We were hoping they couldn't but they couldn't put it in a cargo hole. So this is a fifth pod. It actually came back on another 747. You put this fifth pod kit up there, bolt the engine on. It could be a good engine going over to replace one or a bad one coming up back to, for maintenance. And of course, you only have the one. And, uh, and when you've delivered it, you take the pod off. Amazing. So all 747s had that capability of, of, the, of, of bolting the pod to it. Well, the 400 certainly did. I don't know about the others, but I presume they did. Saves a lot of money on MRO, doesn't it? Yeah. 
you know. See the cows open there for reverse thrust. Yeah, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. So there you go, folks. These are the. Uh, so when that cow moves back, those plates go up at the back to block the air going yeah, out the back. Yeah. And it comes out through these things. So I don't know if you can see there, folks, but this is what we've talked about so many times on the show. Um, there's the blocker doors there, aren't they? So as soon as the, uh, they apply reverse thrust, the blocker doors literally block the, um, the bypass air going through the uh, side of the engine and blows it out of these, which is uh, angled forwards, but sort of like not fully forwards. Right. It's, it's uh, just so that it's... Because 82% uh, of the power is from that bypass, the cold air from the fan. Yeah, incredible incredible and of course we're talking about rolls-royce rb211 here um, which was uh, really kind of the saving grace of the the 747 in the early days when they started switching from the pratt and whitney's the overheaters yeah so we might go up and see if um, we've got the, the pilot that's been doing these premium tours up here he could yeah because there are some people on board aren't there just quick one folks there you go look at the uh, look at the rudders on the uh, on the connie there you go. That's a, an example of what we were talking about with the trip, triple rudders. And I apologise to the fella who said that it had, um, it had triple rudders. And I, and I said, no, it doesn't. It has two. Uh, but anyway, there we go. <laughs> Did you explain why they got three? Uh, had something to do with how it is. Yes, that was it, wasn't it? Um, I'll have to look back on that. Well, Howard Hughes was the major shareholder of an airline called TWA in America, a domestic airline at that time. And he ordered Lockheed to build the Constellation to compete with the DC-4 that American Airlines had ordered. When they came out with the plans, it had a big tail. And he oh, said, I know, yes, because of the hangers. He said yes. he had 60 hangers that wouldn't fit into. So yes. Isn't down, that an incredible story? He cut it down and it's not big enough, so you got to have three. Yeah, that is a great story, isn't it? Whereas these days, they just cut a great big hole in the... Uh, Wow, fantastic. We'll go upstairs and see what's happening. Brilliant. Look at this, folks. A lot of people that are watching right now would have made this journey, I'm sure. Some more privileged than others. Of course, later on in the uh, 747's history, uh, like with Virgin Atlantic, the, uh, the upper deck was actually for economy, wasn't it? Wow, look at these old, look at this. It's like an old, blimey O'Reilly. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? So this is Captain David Barnes, and he'll tell you all everything you want to know. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Good. Come on board. <laughs> Nice to meet you. So, uh, what's your history on the 74 then? Oh, I've been with Qantas for 32 years, flown AJA about 350 hours, 13,000 hours jumbos with Qantas, uh, 400s about a thousand classic, 3,600 hours with 767s, about 1,500 seven three so about nineteen thousand hours flying Boeing's for uh, Qantas. Wow so you've gone through the whole um, the whole uh, analog through to digital That's right, era. Yeah. When I first joined Qantas uh, you had the flight, flight engineer, engineer on the right yeah uh, over here on the right yeah and I had a second class flight engineer license so we when I was a second officer I had to man the panel as well the flight engineer was off in the bunk so I had oh, really? experience doing the panel work as well. Fantastic and of course that was a vital piece of equipment wasn't it in well, terms it was, of so you know this, like they say, there's just point it and fly it, whereas yeah. flight engineers. Well, that's right. And years ago, you had navigators, like you saw on the Connie, and you had, you know, a radio operator. But now you only need two pilots legally to fly the jumbo. Captain left seat, first officer right seat, minimum crew. When we used to go long range, we'd have four pilots. Uh, captain first officer, two second officers, and that gave us the duty time to fly the jumbo long range. Wow, fantastic. <laughs> so what was, your, what was your sort of, like, feeling towards the, the crossover between the the analog and the digital i mean did you find that it was obviously it made things easier but yeah. no but i found it quite a straight transition because i was still relatively young but a lot of the older pilots had flown 707s yes. and uh the early classics had trouble converting to the uh, uh newer technology and some of the captains were a bit uh, reluctant to actually touch the flight management computer and program it and they would actually get the uh first officer to do it all but they were supposed to actually do it and a few of them got caught out where they weren't actually programming the, the computer wow that's... and they were reluctant to do it but I when I flew the 767 first that was semi 
digital screens and also old um, um, aircraft type instruments, so it yes. was semi-analog, yes. and it was a transition for Boeing, and then when they um, brought out the 400 in uh, 1989, that was the full screen, like you see, the full glass cockpit, so, yes. and, and then all the systems are actually taken off the right hand side of the aircraft engineers panel and put overhead, so all the automatic systems are overhead, and the aircraft monitors itself, so yeah. it's basically, the engineer would tell you if there was a problem, but with a 400, it tells you if it's got a problem, brings yes. up a message, the ICAS, we go to a checklist and we can sort it out. And of course, Boeing being Boeing, it's got um, it's got redundancy for redundancy for redundancy, it hasn't has, it? It has, it has. You've got at least a, a and a B system monitoring pressurisation and everything, and it swaps ignition systems, alternate between systems one and two, and we can manually control the cabin if we, we, we lose cabin pressure as well. We can also manually control it. Yeah, and um, so the... One of the um, one of one of the the one last analog only piece of analog that they have on these digitals is, is it the, is it the ver or, or artificial horizon that uh, they well, still have or is it well the only analog really if you look up here is the uh, standby compass so we've got oh that, I've got gotcha. the old standby compass the ETB so every yeah. aircraft has it the other smallest screen down there in the middle is the actual Apollo 13 mode we call it if you lose everything. Yep. It'll give you 180 minutes worth of battery power to get the aircraft on the ground. Wow, so, that's fantastic. But yeah. we've got a lot of redundancy. If the screens fail, they'll switch automatically. Yeah, uh, so yeah. You don't, on the old analogs, if the instrument failed, you'd lost the data. Yes. But with this, you can actually switch. So I'll just show you the... Uh, I'll just get over here for you. Come on in. So if a system fails, we can bring up all our displays here. If this fails, we can actually swap the nav display down to there. Yep. If the primary flight display fails, we can actually swap it to there. So we'll do it automatically, but we can do it manually. So it shows you never actually lose the data. Yes, yes. And that's the beauty of it. But the old instruments, once the instrument failed, that was it. Yeah, yeah. So you, um, so so it was ve you very quickly um, had a lot of faith in it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had absolutely minimal failures on this aircraft in 13,000 hours. Maybe a couple of generators. Biggest problem has been passengers' medical issues. And things yes. Like that. It's not yeah. actually the aircraft, they're very reliable. Yeah. It's yeah. just other things that, that happen or unexpected whether we end up diverting. So, your earlier, your earlier um, uh, 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 variants with the old JT90s. JT90s. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they were, they were, they were real uh, problematic with the, with the overheating, wasn't it? Yeah, they could be, and also the old JT9s and the 200 series. We had water injection, and you had to work out the takeoff card with water methanol prior to 80 knots, after 80 knots, drown out, you got little amber lights came on on the instruments to let you know the water meth was going in. That's insane. 2400 kilograms of water injection just to get you airborne in a hot environment and then the water would run out and away you went. Wow, so you carried water in, yeah, water in methanol separate injection. tanks or? Yeah, in tanks, yeah, water methanol for water meth. And that's for power, just for, just for, extra, for power, extra power. Extra thrust for takeoff. And a lot more smoky. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I never... But then the RBs uh, came RB along and, uh, yeah, reliable, yeah, reliable. yeah, yeah. A heavier engine, I finished up flying um, the ERs with Pontus, which were the extended range uh, jumbos. They had uh, CF6 uh, General Electric, yes. and they were two spool, they only had two sections in them. The Rolls-Royce was a heavier engine, had three spool, so you had a fan, if I bring this up for you, you had the fan up here, you had the N2 and the N3, which are the compressor sections, and they were a lot heavier engine with about 56,000 pounds of thrust, but the CF6s were only a lot lighter engine and they were two spool and they're very reliable. Right, so... Uh, they uh, gave uh, you 62,000 pounds of thrust. Yeah, yeah, a bit more, a bit more controllable on power, yeah, was it? Yeah, yeah, and they were yeah. very reliable and they were faster to start. You could, it took you about a minute longer to get the Rolls-Royce started compared to the uh, GEs, they'd start up very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing I've noticed about the RBs and the ones that we do see. Yeah, they yeah. they seem to sit there forever. It's well, far they take enough. a while, they've yeah. just got to spool up. You've got all that other inertia to get the spools yes. going and the hot yes. gas turning over the next section. And yeah. So the CF6s would actually, we used to joke, they'd light off before they even show fuel flow, which was phenomenal. But normally on a Rolls-Royce, you're looking down here and you're looking for a fuel flow of about 600 kilograms to start. But the GEs would actually light off before even got indication of fuel flow, which was amazing. That's fantastic. <laughs> so in terms of your flying the jumbos and, you know, uh, missing them? Oh, I do. I haven't flown a jumbo for four years. My yeah. last flight was from Santiago in Chile back into Sydney. Landed. Never flew the jumbo again. COVID hit and then I was too old to retrain and go and fly another. Did anyone before. catch that for you? Any photography? Anyone film? No. No? no. no, that was it. Just a normal normal flight to Sydney. And oh, mate. Oh. But I still... 
how many people would retired pilots get to visit a jumbo regularly? That's what. Yeah, I you must be. It must be great for you. Yeah, I do. And great. I show everybody how we used to operate the. Indeed, trade. yeah, indeed. We, we get customers in, they get to load the flight management computer. What I've got programmed there is a flight Sydney down to Melbourne, so you can see the nav display and it's a, a correct flight track and it comes over Wollongong. There's Canberra. And wow. I widen it right out. You can see uh, all the way down into Melbourne. And that's Launceston and Hobart, so there's the large scale map. So when we were over the ocean, we'd fly at about 160 miles scale, so you wouldn't accidentally overfly any weather you wanted to be able to see all the I see you yeah so yeah in terms of your weather mapping and yeah. uh, the weather radar that's yeah. something again it's a flick of a switch and it you is. can bring the that other, up other thing was if everybody likes their air crash over the years there are a lot of accidents with people hitting terrain we've got a, a terrain database we can bring up and that shows you it's GPS related and wow. it will tell you if you're in danger of hitting the terrain wow that's interesting and what that's showing you there is actually the coast all the way down to I'll let it come up in a sec. Malakuta, 90 mile beach, that's the Great Dividing Range. And that shows you the terrain, 7,400 feet would be Mount Kosciuszko, Australia's highest terrain. Right, right, and okay. Give plenty of warning. So that's just, a, that's just a visual warning, not a, vo a verbal warning. Yeah, I've got the other warnings in here if you want to hear them. I don't know whether you want to hear them. Well, you can throw them up for, for people. Just okay, to, let's, go. Let's, go through the, uh, let's go through the emergency systems. It'll go for a while, but you'll get, if you watch the screen, you'll also get warnings. So right. It'll go off in Ice a second. Slope. Pull up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. Obstacle. Obstacle. Pull up. Sink rate. Pull up. Terrain. Pull up. Don't sink. Don't sink. Too that, low. That terrain. means don't descend after taking. Too low. Gear. Too low. Flaps. Too low, terrain, flight slope, bank angle, bank angle, 500, the radio, radio altimeter, altimeter. Yeah. altimeter, yes, 1,000, 100, 50, 30, 20, 10. Wind shear, wind shear, wind shear, too low, terrain, caution, terrain, caution, terrain. Terrain, terrain, pull up. Caution, obstacle. These are things you just never Caution, want to hear, obstacle. aren't they? That's a bad day at the office. Obstacle, yeah. <laughs> obstacle, pull up. We used to practice this in the simulator, so this is the only place you want to see it. Yeah, no, absolutely. We had an exercise, we'd aim at Mount Fuji and it'd get really big in the windscreen and you'd get the warning, terrain, terrain, walk, pull up, and it's disconnect everything, full thrust, speed brake lever down, 20 degrees nose up and hang on. Yeah, yeah. And it, and, and it looked really close. So, so um, we, we get it quite a lot where we have, um, when we're filming um, at Heathrow, for example, and we're, you know, we're side on where they're coming in, oh, yeah. um, where you have a, um, a very late go around, which is, uh, you know, I've had pilots tell me that they've had a wind shear warning whilst they're actually on the ground. Oh, that and can they've... happen. That can happen. Hong Kong in typhoons was always notorious for that. Are you talking about type? Uh, 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 Kai Tech here. Yeah, oh, Kai Tech or the new, the new Hong Kong as well. So right. Get off and get a warning. Expect a late go round. Wow. Um, during the takeoff roll, it even even gives you wind shear ahead. You might be committed past your V1 decision, and you've got to go with what you've got. And Qantas said you've got to rotate with the last 2,000 feet left to go. Just get it, get it airborne because once you pass V1, yeah, there's not enough runway to stop, and you've got to go with what you've, you've got. You've got to got. commit. Yeah. And we used yep. to actually have to do that in the simulator. So, so you can override. There is a there is a manual sort of like human override element to it. Yeah, there is. There is. We always got manual control uh, with Airbus. There's always a computer. There's a number of different modes with Airbus. But if you disconnect the autopilot and disconnect the auto throttle in a Boeing, you've got full control. Right. Just um, I know you've got other people waiting, and we'll uh, and we'll leave you to it. Um, uh, the go around the toga uh, procedure. Oh yeah, well there you go. There's the toga. So that. Up here you've got Toga Toga, take off, go around. Now yep. The yep. <coughs> you could be coming in like this, I believe. you'd have your fuel control switches running. Your flaps would be down at 20 uh, initially and then 30 for landing, 20 for takeoff. So the go around call is go around thrust, we hit the Toga switch. It'll give you a thrust to climb at 2,000 feet a minute. Uh, flaps to 20 to reduce the drag for go around. Positive rate, gear up, and then uh, you're heading towards your missed approach altitude. And then in the case of a, a, a wind shear uh, 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 go around, you basically oh, yeah, the leave the gear. Anyway, yep. bang, bang, make sure you get two clicks of the toga switch will give you maximum thrust. Full power, 
uh, disconnect the uh, auto throttle, disconnect the autopilot, pitch to 15 degrees nose up and that's the wind shear uh, missed approach if you like or the go around. Don't change configuration till you make sure that you're not going to hit the ground. That's why we see the gear extended. Yeah, and I'll yes. leave it till they know that they're safely clear of the wind shear. Right, right. Because if you're going to touch down, you want some gear out, if you like, to attenuate any possible crash, and that'll give yes. you a better chance of survival. Yes, and just show us where the toga switch is on the, uh, right on on the, the 747. Right on the front, right on the front, is it? Right there, there's your toga switch. Right, I gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's crazy, off, isn't it? We'll have a preset thrust. Yeah. So set thrust, toga switch. It'll go to the thrust that you want, and then you've got your thrust set for takeoff. That's the takeoff part. Yeah. And the go around for uh, thrust for airborne. So in terms of uh, in terms of your uh, your, um, your your power up when you're when you're a normal takeoff, yeah. um, you will put the th th levers, the thrust levers, all the way through, and they're, they're predetermined. Uh, weights well, would. What you normally do is the thrust is set for your takeoff. The yes. heavier you are, you might be full power. Yes. Takeoff. We bring it up to about one inch. Watch the engines come up and stabilise. You're not N1 pressures and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, just check they're all stabilised. You're happy to go. Hit the, the toga switch. Thrust will come up on the auto throttle. Uh, if the FO is doing the takeoff, he'll take his or her hand off the thrust lever because the captain will have his or her hand on there till V1 because only the captain makes the decision either to stop or go and that's the call, stop or go. Absolutely After fantastic. V1, you've got to be in your mind, go, go, go. Do you still dream about flying? Oh, I still do, yeah. Yeah, you have flying dreams. It's in your blood. I've yeah. got 23,600 hours, you wow. never get to yeah. the Yeah, <laughs> and it's, you're never going to get tired of coming down here, are you, no, talking to people? It. I love it. This is a big part of my history and I love showing people what we used to do because post 9-11, you can't have people on the flight deck and this is the chance to show everybody what's going on at the front the flight and what, what's happening. Yeah. yeah and of course you get to wear your uniform every day uniform. fantastic it's not the latest Qantas uniform this is one of the older ones of course a better one really the better one I, think. Yeah. I yeah. had a nicer set of women <laughs> sir thank you so <laughs> much okay. it's been an absolute pleasure nice uh, really appreciate your time All as well right. I know you've got other people to talk yeah, to thank you so much okay. enjoy cheers thank you, cheers. Thank you. thanks Phil thanks sir Let's just get the camera. Hello. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Okay, mate. Well, that's uh, we really appreciate that because I know you got uh, people coming on here and um, and uh, paying for their paying for their walk around and uh, so uh, that was really good. Oh, we've got a few donations apparently coming your way as well. Uh, Not you personally. You know, this <laughs> one of the things we've got glass doors on our toilets, which seems to have, uh, some people question. You've got glass doors on the toilets? Yeah. That's interesting. Oh, is that top. just, is that? Oh, I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you take Well, what happened when we first got it? Someone, yeah, no, no. Someone used one of the toilets. So oh, yeah. We locked the doors and then yeah. people complained they couldn't see in. So normally we just have LED lights from hangar power glass doors so people can see what's there going you on. go there you go fantastic um have you seen the crew rest upstairs uh no no because that's a that's that's somewhere that a lot of people don't get to see galley crew rest area folks this is what this is this is what this is what happens when you sometimes see the uh, see the flight attendants disappear and they never come back it's like where are they gone you know um happens on different aircraft have different crew rest areas some some are down in the in the in the galley down in the bottom of the aircraft some are right at the top and the jumbo jet is uh is right at the back uh the, is the pilot crew rest area is out the front isn't it it was at the top of the stairs on the left yeah, and they've got yeah. one they've got that little room inside the cockpit you saw yes and they got yeah. another toilet inside the yeah cockpit. yeah but this is the there's eight four double bunks if you want yeah to let's have a little look up there well, I'll see you later, Phil. Thanks. And under the... <laughs> Look at me, Nick. Under the... You'll see... I'm going to have a struggle getting out of here. The flight recorders. There's a panel up and you can see... Oh, yeah, yeah. These, uh, there's the, um, the um, flight recorders in there, folks. There we go. Look. Uh, which and you can't really see. And, of course, they're up here in the tail and you'd expect it to crash the tail to fall off and, and they'd be easy to find. Yes. So you've got four double bunks. A little mirror here, do your lippy. <laughs> do your lippy. Yeah, look at that. Flight recorders under there. <laughs> That's crazy. Not much room, but uh, enough room if you're knackered.
Yeah, if you weren't good friends before you came up, you'd imagine you would be, but... <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, uh, forgive me, folks, because I'm going to be uh, backing up down here. Do -do 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 this vehicle is reversing. <laughs> Attention. Do -do 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 -do. So this, this God, blow me the hell. And I'm <laughs> there we go. Thanks, mate. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Can we pop see out on the wing just to look out on it, or uh, are they? Uh, We've got people. Yeah, have a look. There's nobody there. <laughs> Cup tea. Can we squeeze past? Yeah. You can squeeze past. Thank you. But Thank you. For the purposes of showing passengers, I have placed. So that's one of the premium talks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, we just need to see if anything just. I can take that down. Lovely. So this way we do wing walks. Yeah. People put their harnesses on and connect. Wow! Yeah, look at that. It's the old flapper on down. Look. Well, All it's the not actually a flapper on, but it's an in. Oh. It's a high speed aileron. High speed aileron. It yeah. Do both like the flapper. Yeah. On. Yeah. And the low speed aileron out back. And out the back. Yeah. Spoilers. The large spoilers here. The large spoilers here. The big squares. Yes. They are only used on the ground because if you use them airborne, yeah, they destroy the lift over the tail. They're so big. Oh right, yeah, yeah. Whereas the outboard, the, the midsection ones, they they use yeah. them to, to sort of like um, along with just just, just flight to, control to surface. Descend. Just no, yeah. well, they're mainly for descending. Yeah, small yeah. Airflow, so you can descend quicker. Uh, they do operate in a roll mode after a certain degree of turn. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Well. I think we'll uh, we'll finish it outside. I think we'll finish it outside with the uh, the sight of this beautiful girl in the. Uh, or should we walk through and uh, finish it? Do a little PTC right at the NGP. Go through to the go through the. The hangar, and uh, you're right, mate. So the premium economy. Yeah. Premium economy starts here. This is another little thing. Hasn't changed a great deal, this has is it? it? I can't say dumb waiter anymore. This is the little lift to take the food yeah. trolleys up there. Yes, yeah. It's got some wow, look at that. Process. Yeah, so yeah. These trolleys go up there. Cabin services manager would sit there. Oh right. He's in flight entertainment. Oh okay, really? Yeah. I don't have that anymore, do they? I don't it's know. all computer controlled, I think. Blimey, so so um I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware of that. Look at that folks. Cabin flight guy. attendant that uh, controls the in flight so they'd have to sit here permanently or, or no, just I don't think so. overviewing just it, just set it up and Wow, yeah. I believe some sat there a lot instead of helping and others got up and helped. Hey, are they video recorders? They video VHS, aren't they? Well, they are a type of. They're a bit smaller than the VHS, the ones I've seen. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Brilliant. Premium? Premium economy, then. They took the first class out of the front when they got seats that had beds. These are big old pods, aren't they? Yeah, so these are business class. Wow. And that's her, um, and that's that's her, her landing, landing for the last time. Yep. Wow. See, a large crowd came out. Wow, big crowd as well, and man. You notice up that, you can't see it on your KB, I think, but the cowls were open, but they didn't want to use reverse thrust because the outboard engines weren't over the runway. Oh. It's a narrow runway. 
So right, they yeah. might have sucked up grass and stones and they wanted those engines back, remember? Yes, yes, yes. So they had it open in case they needed it, but they didn't need it. They could have they stopped in a could have stopped in sixteen hundred metres at eighteen hundred and forty three metres. Yeah, very powerful but brakes on they these. They rolled things. through to save the brakes. Yeah, and yeah. Awesome. They didn't awesome. let the tires down to get it in. What's that, sorry? They let the tire pressure down. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, it did the shortest delivery flight, even though it's not official. Sydney here was ten and a half minutes. Okay, and what time did they land? 7.47. Yes, that's what they planned to do. I was here, I think it was 7.48, but I'm not, oh, was allowed, it? I'm not allowed to say that. Yeah, <laughs> we <Okay>. just did. <laughs> yeah, whoops. Fantastic. So, and that's right up the front, folks. That's the... Uh, no, it only had that short delivery. It was still too heavy for the runway, so they let the tyre pressure down from uh, 210 to 120 pounds per square inch, and that spread the weight. And then it was so she literally flew a flew flew a, 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 a flight, a, a passenger flight. No, not a passenger flight. No, no, not from not to here, but the one that into Sydney. And then and then that was it, for her, or was she stored at Sydney for a while? No, no, no. This is when it came here. I'm saying. In, in yeah, no, no. I know, I know. But when they came from Sydney, prior yeah. to sit, prior to it, when it landed in Sydney, it was carrying passengers. Yes. yes wow. Yeah. So right up to the last flight, literally, well, apart yeah, from there well, to like here. A week or two, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. wow. Wow, what an emotional day. Right, okay. thank you, sir. I notice burnt. on the front, it's hard to see, but the series name, not the aircraft name, is Longreach. Yeah. Yes, Longreach, yes, yes. That's a double meaning because that's that long reach it can go to LA without refueling but long reach is also the town that Qantas is supposedly started in, in Queensland so it's yes. considered the founding the founding town in Queensland so it was a double yes. meaning yes because all air aircraft are named after um after towns well they were um I believe that changed this was they had a well they the procedure was in the when they got this that they named the first one the first of the new series was named after our capital city Canberra this is the city of Canberra and then after that it could be the city of Wollongong or whatever I got you I don't yeah I believe they do that anymore um, like they've named one of the A380s after David Warren the inventor yeah, of the black box and things like that and, uh, and uh, Nancy no, Bird so they've yeah, changed that so this oh, is the and what a lot of people don't um, realize or understand is that the the end of the wingtips on the old uh, twos and threes and the uh, sorry ones twos and threes was the hf high frequency aerial uh, mast or antennae and that's now stored in the wing in the in the vertical stabilizer the leading edge of the vertical stabilizer yeah yeah the, which is the unpainted bit obviously yeah yeah very clever so one look at her folks one more look there we go um let's uh Still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, I just uh, I had to take your headset off because you were sh shouting and screaming. <coughs> so the wings are two metres longer than the Hello? 300 more fuel winglets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, thank you, Phil. Let's, uh, I'm here, Jilly, I'm here. Jilly, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, yeah, 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 just stand by. 216,000 litres. Crazy, isn't it? That's incredible. And of course, um, a lot of people don't appreciate the, uh, the contingencies of fuel that you have to allow for as well. You know, you've got your flight, but you've got your taxi, you've got your, 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 your go around, your diverts, your, your holding. Mm. Well, I, I actually did the planning for that London, Sydney, the route planning sector. Did you? And the, what they did was that the 500 kilograms they allowed for taxi, well, they didn't use that because they towed it to the runway. So they had the extra 500 up their sleeve. So. Right, yeah. right. So, um, Phil, on behalf of everybody at Big Jet TV, I just want to say a big thank you to you and your team.